page 74 in the lecture manual. It's the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. I want to go over that just right now so that you can see uh, it's well done in the textbook. You can see it, of course, in your notes. But let's just look at it for a moment and see what we've got. And so as you look, this is called craniosacral. Cranial, from here, it's three, seven, nine, and 10. And so, so three, seven, nine, and 10. That's oculomotor, that's facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus, those nerves. Down here for sacral, it's S, two, three, and four. So the sacral nerves that are here. So it's called craniosacral. What does parasympathetic? And so para means beside. So parasympathetic is beside the sympathetic. Where's the sympathetic? Let's look at this one. And as you look, it's going from here Lumbar. It's going from the thorax down to the lumbar, and so this is the sympathetic from here to here. Now, when we look at it, there's long preganglionic fibers, and in the textbook, you can see them going right out to the organ. Whether it's the heart or the stomach, it goes right out there, and then there's a very short postganglionic. This one is a short preganglionic. It's just going right out beside the vertebrae. In fact, this ganglion right here is called Paravertebral ganglion. What did para mean? Well, meant beside. So it's beside the vertebrae, it's right there. And then there's a long postganglionic fiber going out to the heart or the stomach. Um, same thing that we've got here. And so the uh, parasympathetic, long preganglionic. What we need to recognize is what's the neurotransmitter. And so I want you to look at the neurotransmitters that we've got. For this one, I'm going to put This acetylcholine is in every neurotransmitter except this one. What's the neurotransmitter here? And so hopefully you've got an idea. And so if you put this down, norepinephrine or adrenaline, what's it going to do to the heart? Well, you know right away, adrenaline's going to speed up the heart rate. What will it do to the bronchi? Open them up. Try to get it so that you can do fight or flight. Parasympathetic, of course, is for the rest and digest. But there's a two terms that come up in your notes there. It's number three. I want you to look at these terms right here. this mean? I want you to look at this term. And when we look at it, you can see that it, it's going to be the same of a derivative. What does it mean to work? Energy. What does it mean to work inside? And so we've got that internal ability to work. This one, acetylcholine, makes it work. This one, Adrenaline makes it work. And so there's the terms that adrenergic, cholinergic, um, they come up with drugs even that they'll say anticholinergic. So that's what uh, you need to know for those. Uh, the rest of it I think is pretty straightforward. Um, you've got where they're coming from. The other thing is the fight or flight that's for this one, the adrenergic, and this one uh, that is parasympathetic is cholinergic, it's for rest and digest. So I just wanted to make sure that you had that information for sympathetic and parasympathetic. And now what I'm going to do 
is do the cranial nerves. Now this was for the lab on cranial nerves, and I'm just going to put up a mnemonic that you, you sometimes can use for it, and uh, going through what are the cranial nerves. So let me just wipe this off. We'll get that up for this next one. So there's a mnemonic, there's lots of them, but this one I find goes easily because you've got O, 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 and we're going to see what those three O's refer to for the first three, and then of course we've got the two T's here and coming on down. And so as we look at this for these right here, and I'm just going to number them, um, they'll number them with Roman numerals, but I'll just number them with um, the Arabic numbers because I'm just going to put them down here for us. And so we've got these. Now when you look at this, then there's also the, um, whether they're motor, sensory, or both. And that is in your lab book as well, you can see that. But there is also a mnemonic for that one, and I'm going to put this down uh, so that you can use it, obviously, to know whether they're motor, sensory, or both. And so I'll put that just over here. Now, you can see it's just one of those that helps you to know what it is. If it's B, it's both motor and sensory. And so as we look at these then, you can see that there's different ones that are. Uh, we've got olfactory is, is definitely sensory, optic is sensory, and then we've got motor, which would be oculomotor. I want to go over these on the model so that you can see these as well. And we're going to see, uh, of course, their names and so let's check these over. And um, as you look at this, and I just want you to check to see uh, on here, here's O, olfactory. So O, 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 olfactory, optic, and then here is oculomotor. So when you think olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear is right there. Trochlear means a pulley. And so it's coming around and that's what we've got. Trigeminal means three and tw uh, twins. This one, then it's the largest one of the cranial nerves. Uh, this, as we look at this location right here, it goes A, F, A. So it's going to be um, the abducens, and then we've got facial and auditory. So abducens, facial, auditory. Six, seven, and eight going right across there. Nine, 10, 11, glossopharyngeal, the vagus, and then the uh, spinal accessory. And finally, hypoglossal. I'm going to put the terms up on the board just so that you can see those. And let's have a quick look at this.
now that we've got the names, let's just go over this just briefly. There are tests for each of these, and you can see the tests in your lab book. You can see what it would be. But what would they do? For this one, olfactory, you'd actually close it off, see if they can smell cinnamon or peppermint, and you'd have to do bilateral testing to see when they fell down the stairs, did they tear their olfactory nerve or whatever they happen to do. Optic, this one is just like if you close or cover one eye, can you see or can you see? You've got to test bilaterally. Oculomotor. For this one, if you shine a light in their eye, the pupil will constrict. And that is the oculomotor test. Shine the light in their eye, the pupil will constrict. Trochlear, for this one, this is tracking. And so when you think trochlear tracking, put your finger out to the side of your head, find it with your eyes, look for it, and then follow it around. And so trochlear is for tracking that from left to right and take it around. Um, for this one, uh, trigeminal, for this, what you can do is use a Q-tip or even your finger, but you need to test three parts of their face. So you'd say, can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel this? And you do it on both sides um, in that way, because there's actually a branch of the nerve that comes here, and there's a branch of the nerve here, and there's a branch of the nerve here. So you've got to test the three parts uh, to check for this trigeminal. Um, abducens. This one, abduction is to take something away. And so again, if you put your finger out to the side, look for it with your eyes, follow it around the tracking, that would be abducens. So it's another one of tracking. For facial, this one is the one that if it's affected on one side, they'll have Bell's palsy. And what will happen is that the mouth will not come up in a smile, the eyelid won't close, they can't wrinkle their forehead on that side. And so the test for it then is, can you wrinkle your forehead, can you close your eyes, can you smile? And so those are what you've got for facial. Auditory, uh, for this one, have the person close their eyes and then you've got to have something like a tuning fork or whatever that you would make a sound and you're doing it on one side of their head, see if they can hear it. So that's auditory. The other part of the auditory nerve, because it's vestibulocochlear is another, is can they balance? Now you can try this on your own, uh, but you need to just stand on one foot and you can close your eyes, see if you can balance. And that would be indicating if that is working. For this one, glossopharyngeal, and for this, uh, for the ninth one, the glossopharyngeal, um, this is the gag reflex. I think of, G and G, and so it's the gag reflex. Now when you look at this one, if you put a tongue depressor back by their palatine tonsils, they should gag. And if they do, then it would be safe to give them something to eat. If they don't gag, if it's not working, don't give it to them. Uh, because this isn't absolutely necessary if they're going to be taking fluids or eating. For this one, for Vegas, and we know vagus came from the word vagabond. It goes everywhere. And so it goes, uh, obviously, lots of places. It goes to the lungs, to the heart, goes to the stomach, goes to the liver, all of these places that it goes. But it also goes to the epiglottis, and it goes to um, the uvula. And so when you think of the vagus nerve, this is can you swallow. Now, you can just try if you can swallow or the other thing is that you can open your mouth and say, ah, and if the uvula stays midline, then everything's okay. If it goes to one side, then the vagus on that side isn't working. If they cannot swallow, and this especially with a um, person who's coming out of an anesthetic, or if they've got Alzheimer's, and in the end stage of Alzheimer's, they can't swallow, and it becomes one of the terminal features. Um, so we've got the vagus nerve, uh, can you swallow, or the uvula being midline. For this one, spinal accessory, now if you've got somebody there that you can put your hands on their shoulders, you can tell them to try to push up against your hands, and if they can push up against it, it means the spinal accessory is working. Spinal accessory, I think it's just the shoulder shrug. Can they shrug their shoulders? And if they can push them up, that means spinal accessory is working. 
For number 12, hypoglossal, and this one, again, means tongue, it means under the tongue. Say that somebody's been um, playing football, they got their jaw broken, uh, there's a chance that the hypoglossal nerve got torn. And with that, then if you say for them to stick their tongue out, then it might have tremors or it might go to one side or the other. This is indicating there's a problem with the hypoglossal nerve. And so we've got all of these and uh, we'll just go through them just briefly and then that's it for the cranial nerves. So let's look. This one is sensory, olfactory, can you smell? This one is sensory, can you see? This one is motor, when you shine the light in their eye, does the pupil constrict? This one is motor, can they track that vision? This one is both. It's not only the sense of feeling on those three parts, but it's also got motor. For this one, uh, for the motor for abducens, again, it's the tracking. For this one, it's both. They've got feeling and they've got the motor action of closing their eye, of, of wrinkling their forehead, um, of smiling. This one, auditory, it's sensory. And so this one, both, it's the gag reflex that's happening and we've got those and this one's both for the vagus. Lots of things happening, sensory and motor. This one is motor. If you put their hands on their shoulders and they shrug, that's motor. This one is motor. It's can they put their tongue out and it stays uh, midline. And so we've got it for cranial nerves. Okay, good luck with the studies.